Hello. Beep, 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 beep. Hello, people, and welcome to the Court of the EDI Jester. Oh, what have I got you on this glorious day? I have an extraordinary uh, tweet thread from Claire Page of No Secret Lessons. That's at No Secret Lessons on the old X slash Twitter, right? This is about mermaids. Now, you know as well as I do, because I've already had a bit of a laugh about it, that the Charity Commission sp uh, spanked mermaids rather fishy bottom, right? And told them off for a number of things. But, 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 jubilant though I was that this was uh, certainly a move in the right direction, it is fairly apparent that something is terribly amiss, which has been pointed out by a number of our usual commentators, or commentators online. Although we take the win that we get, there is something very wrong with what the Charity Commission have been up to because it appears that they have been given copious amounts of evidence to prove the things that they are now saying didn't happen. Claire has been in contact with a, uh, a parent who has written, wrote a letter of complaint to the Charities Commission about mermaids. And the parent has kindly given Claire permission to reproduce that. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about today or for, for us to go through today. And then you can go and have a look at the whole thing yourself as per normal with the links as usual in the Dubris. Other than that, I had a great review from Claire Fox about the Warrior Teachers, and also she printed my article on the Battle for Ideas or Academy of Ideas substack. Link in the Dubris. Okay, I'm so proud of it. Isn't it lovely to get something nice like that? Much so they've actually allowed me to publish, even though I'm not a particularly good writer. So I really would like to hear from you what you think of that as well. So I put that in the Dubris. Uh, secondly, thirdly, whatever it is we're at now, come and be a Warrior Teacher. We're starting in November. Come on, get those apps in. I'm looking forward to getting more people uh, getting involved in this fight to protect uh, free speech, children, the future, everything that comes with it. Uh, so exciting. Anyway, onwards. So Claire Page, no secret lesson plans. Following the publication of the Charity Commission inquiry into mermaids, a parent has shown me their letter of complaint to the CCC about mermaids and permitted publication of excerpts here. Please read and share to illustrate just what a terrible whitewash this inquiry is. So I'm reading and sharing, Claire, I hope you're well. There's a picture there, Jenny. I don't know what that is, but I'm sure you can find out if you go and look. Let's see what's going on here. In the Charity Commission's report, it explains to a, to a number, it explains the number of public complaints the charity received and lists them as falling under the themes detailed below. And you can see there on the screen that between September 2022 and July 2023, the Commission received 62 complaints from the public about the charity. That this totally included instances of multiple submissions for individuals. There were 54 individual complainants. Now, first things first, right? I'm quite surprised by that. And again, I would really like to hear from you about your surprise. There are many of us in this fight. I've got 12,000 followers. How can there only be 54 individual complaints? Right? So, bit, bit, bit of the old guilt here. Up your bloody game. If there's only 54 of us that put a complaint in, we really need to get our head around the fact that these things work, that actually complaining or writing to your MP works. So there must be an awful lot of us that are not doing it. Just a question. Again, you'll tell me in the is what you think about whether I'm being a cheeky bugger and saying, for goodness sake, up your game, do something. But that's what it sounds like to me. Anyway, of these complaints, 45 were from individuals responding to public reporting about the charity and its activities, and 17 from individuals about their experience of the charity and its services. So you had both there, both the charity itself and also uh, external, people from external. The complaints received largely fell under the following themes. The relationship with the Gender Identity Development Service at the Tavistock and Portman NHS Foundation Trust, affiliation to private medical practices, provision of chest binders, mm -hmm. Provision of medical advice, lack of due diligence over staff and trustee recruitment. I think I've told you my story about the chest binding girl before. I'm sure I have, but I'll, I'll tell it again in case anybody who's watching. I was sat old in court on Canal Street in Manchester, as I do. I sit there in the chair and just wait for people to come along and then pontificate about rubbish, rather like I'm doing now. <laughs> and she came along and she was obviously binding. She was only about 18, 19. She came along with a mate of mine who sat down and had a drink. She sat next to me, or two away from me. And all the time I was talking about various things, she was watching me like a hawk. It was really weird. She was like this. Most peculiar, as if she'd never seen an old man before. And then as the conversation continued, suddenly she grabbed me by the arm and said, I'm non-binary. To which I responded, male or female? And she said, female. 
There you go. I'm sure I've told that before. So let's let's move on to see what Claire is saying now. In addressing the topic of lack of due diligence over staff and trustees, recruitment, the Charity Commission report deals only with the well-publicised case of their trustee, John Dick, Dr. Jacob Breslow, who spoke a paedophile support group, emphasising the mermaids were unaware of this fact and that he was the only trustee for a short while, was never in contact with the charity's beneficiaries and stood down promptly. This was noticed and pulled up upon by the Charities Commission, who said there was a lack of staff and trustee recruitment due diligence. Again, go see Claire's thread because it's there's an enormous amount to this and I'm going to stop shortly. It's just to give you a flavour. This gave the impression of a one-off incident that might well not be the charity's fault, which was resolved swiftly. This is misleading because Breslow was not the only person associated with mermaids to cause safeguarding concerns, as this parental complaint clearly shows. Dear Charity Commission, I am shocked as the mother of a child signposted by school nurse towards children's support group mermaids to learn that the person known as Jake communicating with my child about a photo shoot in a bedroom has a very concerning relationship with queer theory, particularly fetish and kink. The children, including my own, who the advert opportunity magazine feature below was sent to, are children with incongruence with their sex body, some due to sexual abuse, who are seeking evidence based support. I note from noted from Mumsnet that in 2019 Mermaids employed Jake Edwards to a communication draw. Jake's online work prior to that has been revealed was heavily involved in talking about fetishes, kink and the different sized objects Jake had inserted into, into his anus. Jake talked about kink for 10 minutes starting with a different sized object they inserted. The video was made private once people saw it and raised the arm. The alarm, sorry. Below, another of concern. The videos since deleted, and they've got the videos, the links to the videos which have been got, they're gone now. The videos since deleted were discussed at length before deletion on Mumsnet. Evidence below, described by mothers as grim and explicit. Jake, it seems, then invited to attend a question and answer session with the Remage Child Service user, users as advertised below. One of the videos Jake featured in is still available here and is not suitable for children. The parent went on to complain to the Charity Commission that Mermaid staff had asked children directly if they'd like to feature in a photo shoot, directing them to Jake if interested, explaining they need to be comfortable having, having a picture of her taken in their bedroom. And there's the advert below. So it's really interesting that Claire has done this work, and thank you, Claire, for your diligence. How did the Charity Commission miss this? How did the Charity Commission this? Or, or does it not fall within their remit? Or is there a rule that means they can do nothing about it? How did it not see this? How did the Charity Commission not recognise this is going on? And were there really only 54 complaints? There's something very fishy going on here. And Claire is obviously intent on getting to the bottom of it. And believe me, when Claire attempts to get to your bottom, you're not going to win. Uh, get to the bottom. Claire, I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> Other than that, I'm off, all right? Go and have a look. Read it, because this is really shocking stuff. The head of the Charity Commission playing at. It's almost as if somebody should take a look at what their EDI policies are that they're involved in with the government. Because that's an interesting read, too. I'll see you later. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.